the 2010s. So, so those happened. Honestly, it's been a crazy decade, and I highly doubt that I have to be the one to tell you that. And let's be honest, at this point, every single year since the end of 2009 has basically been called shitty by everyone that lived through it. Although I think it's pretty safe to say 2020 hasn't been the best year of anyone's life, not gonna lie. I think we can all agree that if anything has saved every year so far, it's been movies. Although there's been so many movies in the last, oh... Nine years that I decided to narrow it down to just the animated ones because otherwise everything on this list would mostly be the same crap And I'm too lazy to brainstorm a bunch of limitations and the only limit I need to put on animated films is no anime And I'm giving myself a limit on only five Disney and Pixar films should be easy enough, huh? I said that and then wrote the entire script with this with 10 films in mind, only to desire several more, so I booted the number up to 15. Alright, so let's stop stalling this intro and just get into the list then. Also, this list isn't really in any specific order, but most of my favorite picks are gonna be in the upper tier, like top five. Ah. So, starting off with a pick that I'm sure nobody saw coming. Blue Skies, the Peanuts movie. This is genuinely one of the most wholesome movies I saw this entire decade, and it shocks me how many people agree that it's a good movie, but I'd never hear anybody talk about it. I was pretty excited when I heard this movie was being made back in like 2014 when I saw the first teaser trailer, and I basically forgot it was happening until I saw it on Blu-ray at Walmart. I've always loved the Peanuts franchise, and I needed to inject this film into my brain as quickly as possible, and surprisingly, my mom actually got the movie for me. Probably because of the adorable little Snoopy plush that came packaged with the Walmart exclusive gift set. Still have it, by the way. I don't really know what to say about this film, other than it's just a pleasant film to watch, and I basically love everything about it. It really does feel like something right out of a classic Peanuts series. I recommend it to anyone who even remotely enjoys Peanuts and has yet to watch it. It's very rewatchable, and I just love watching this movie with my grandparents, who also grew up with this series. Ah! I have literally no way to describe this next film without it sounding super strange, so I'll just be completely blunt. This film is about a character who has lost his hand, and the entire film is showing us his hand attempting to reach its human, while we see flashbacks to the human's life and how he wound up losing it in the first place. This may sound like an absolutely ridiculous premise, and believe me, it it is, but everything about this film just grabs your attention from the first second and it never lets go. The story and the characters are engaging enough and they hold your eyes glued to the screen throughout the film's entire run from the opening five minutes. There's really not much I can say aside that the film's on Netflix and if you're looking for something very different from anything else you have ever seen, then believe me, this is different. The film even got nominated for Best Animated Feature, but it also was up against Spider-Verse. So for once, I won't complain about how BS the Oscars are. <laughs> this won't be the first time I say this on this list, but this movie turned out way better than it really had any right to be. And like another movie I'll bring up, one of the greatest things about this movie is definitely the voice cast. A few years ago, I never would have believed that a Captain Underpants movie would have actually been good, let alone well-received by critics and audiences alike. And the fact that this is an example of a book adaptation that borrowed from, like, several novels and actually turned out better for it amazes me even more. And like I said, the voice cast for this film is amazing. Kevin Hart is George, Thomas Middleditch is Harold, Nick Kroll as Professor Poopy Pants, and Ed Helms, Andy from The Office is our famed superhero. I unironically adore this film, and I'm just so happy that it turned out as good as it did. And if DreamWorks decides that they're going to greenlight a sequel and bring back the cast and production crew from the first film, I will definitely be in the theater when they cook it up. I don't care that I'll probably be in my 20s when that finally happens. I am excited, and if they can hit the hammer on the head again... Hit the hammer. If they can hit the nail on the head again, I will be excited for this. And then there's Chunky! He's dead. I wasn't knowing what to expect the first time I saw this film. I saw the trailer, but a friend of mine then told me that the trailer was absolutely nothing like the movie, which even when I was a kid worried me a bit because I loved the look of the trailer. I am glad, however, to say that the Book of Life was better than I could have imagined. The music in this film is genuinely one of my favorite soundtracks of the decade, and I've seen this film at least 20 times. I honestly personally love that all the main characters are animated to look like one puppets, and the story is so fantastical and full of imagination and wonder. The animation is beautifully 
colorful and expressional. The voice acting is on point, and honestly, I just love everything about this movie. I know some people have their problems with this, every film has their flaws, but this is my personal list and opinions, and this film just makes me feel good whenever I watch it. And there's not much else I can say. If you love Spanish and or Mexican culture, I highly recommend this film. And if you enjoy Pixar's Coco, then I really can't recommend this one enough. A man has fallen into the river in Lego City. This is the other film I was talking about when I said that there would be another film on this list that was so much better than it had any right to be. The, the fact that a film simply titled The Lego Movie ended up being unironically one of the most beloved, critically acclaimed animated films of all time just says something about this film's quality. The voice acting is perfect. I fell in love with Chris Pratt and Will Arnett because of this movie. Will Ferrell is as hilarious as ever. I love every single line in this film, and I find myself quoting it as a few inside jokes with my friends. Not to mention, they throw emotional beats into this film that are actually earned, and some of them genuinely hit me every time I watch this movie, and I just feel the need to quickly shout out the sequel actually being as good as this first movie. Both of these films were hilariously, emotionally investing films, and while the spin-off films were pretty hit or miss, I'm kinda sad to see that Warner Brothers lost the license to this franchise and can't make any more future films. And while I am cautiously optimistic and curious to see what Universal will do with the property, I'm also glad that they don't own the characters that Warner Brothers made for their films because I think that the way they ended it was a good enough wrap-up to leave a positive legacy behind on the franchise. Okay, so the only reason this movie is this high on my list is because I forgot that this film actually came out in 2010, and I didn't want to have literally all of my Disney movies in a row. So, Toy Story 3 is a great film. Isn't it? What do I even say here? This movie made my eight-year-old self cry in a movie theater and bawl for like several minutes upon rewatching the movie years later after binging the trilogy again. I personally thought the fourth film was pretty good, but I don't think anything will top the impact Toy Story 3 had on older audiences of this franchise. This movie was dark. Like, really, really dark. Lotso is still, in my opinion, one of the greatest, most hateable Pixar villains of all time, let alone in the 2010s. He's just so devious and invested in his mindset, and he's literally a totalitarian dictator ruling over a daycare center. That is possibly the greatest thing I've ever said, by the way. Thank you, Internet. And I can't even talk about this film without talking about the ending. It's just a beautiful send-off to these characters in the franchise, at least for the time being. I don't think Toy Story 4 should be removed from canon. It was a good movie. I'm talking about this movie movie when it came out. And I'm gonna move on before I get sidetracked because there's really not much I can say that hasn't already been said. Toy Story 3 is a great film. Let's get right to the point here. I love Kung Fu Panda, and Kung Fu Panda 2 is one of my favorite DreamWorks movies of all time. Emphasis on one of this ain't their last time showing up here. But what do I even say about this film that hasn't been said already? The cast is great, the action is pulse racing, the animation is beautiful, and the emotional beats of this film are almost all tear jerking. Poe's journey of discovering his past and overcoming the scars of his childhood are just amazingly handled, and Lord Shen is such an intimidating craze and almost terrifying villain, and can I just give a shout out to Gary Oldman for his amazing acting. I can't believe that Jim freaking Gordon is also a crack-eyed peacock who's trying to conquer all of China after slaughtering a herd of pandas. And honestly, I'm not gonna say anything better or funnier than that in the next several minutes, so we should probably move on. I'm going to jump! Do a flip! I knew going into this list I'd have to include some comic book movie here, and safe to say that this is the first thing that immediately came to my mind for great animated comic book movies. No, it's not Spider-Verse, but spoiler alert, we'll get to that one later, I promise. For now, we'll look at a film on the other side. Batman Under the Red Hood is some of the most fun I've had watching a Batman film ever, and I would gladly put it up there with the Dark Knight trilogy and Batman Returns as one of my favorite film starring the bat of all time. I was so tempted to put The Dark Knight Returns parts 1 and 2 on this list, but I just couldn't put anything above Red Hood. I am in love with this film. How could I not put it here? Fucking Bender is the Joker, and he's actually one of the best Jokers we've ever had in a fucking Batman movie. Anyone who has yet to see this film and loves Batman or DC in general absolutely needs to see this movie. It's outstanding how much they nailed everything about this film and its presentation, its animation, its voice acting. I cannot recommend it enough. The film itself is one of the reasons that I had to extend this to 15. Yes, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills!
Back at it again with DreamWorks. Shame this film didn't get anything more than a single film in an animated short less than 15 minutes. Megamind is an amazing film, and I honestly can't do it justice here. If you want an actual in-depth review on this film, I'll leave a link in the description to Schaeferless Productions' video on this film. He does he does amazing content, and I certainly can't live up to it. Megamind is just so absolutely hilarious and subversive in its story, its characters, and it had the misfortune of coming out the same year as Despicable Me, Shrek Forever After, and How to Train Your Dragon. Now, I am not saying any of these films are bad by any means. Believe me, every one of these four films I personally love. I'm just saying, Megamind had some steep competition, and I hate to see that it couldn't go any further than it did, and yet, fucking Boss Baby got a Netflix series. I'm gonna move on from that, just so, just so I don't get any more pissed off. From the first teaser for Coco, I immediately had my hopes up that this would be Pixar's big return to form after almost a decade of mostly sequels with just a couple original films thrown in between that were still good in their own right, but I was absolutely not prepared for what this movie had in store. I was in the middle of a Spanish class when this movie hit theaters, and I ended up missing its theatrical release, but lucky for me, my teacher was just as excited to see this movie as I was, so when it came out on Blu-ray, we actually watched it in class. And and oh my god, I have never been so close to crying in school almost my entire life. Coco is a beautiful film full of stunning animation, amazing attention to cultural detail, and a surprisingly emotionally deep story, and I'm definitely looking forward to see what Pixar does in this next decade. Here's hoping Soul is a worthy Pixar original story. Da -da -da, we're dead. <laughs> As a kid, I used to think that DreamWorks films were, well, Shrek, basically, and I just kind of thought all their films were quirky, silly, parody-like films that were really just meant to entertain dumb kids like me, and then I saw How to Train Your Dragon in theaters, and then the second film took the mature story and the characters and turned everything basically up to 11. So needless to say, I had high hopes for The Hidden World, and I am so glad to say that I was not disappointed with the finale to what might just be one of my new favorite film trilogies of all time. The conclusion of this franchise was something I really wasn't expecting to be handled the way they did it, and the story was wrapped up in such a mature way that only this franchise could perfect, and I really wasn't expecting Grimmel to be such a step up as a villain. I love Drago as much as the next person, but Grimmel is just so much more intimidating and cunning, and his presence was felt throughout the entire film. There are those who obviously didn't enjoy this film, and I won't tell anyone they're wrong, because entertainment and emotions are subjective, but this movie left me feeling hopeful, and the those who have seen the film will probably know what I mean, and I don't want to spoil anything here. Let's just leave it at I love this film and move on from there. You're waking the neighbors! Shut up! When I first heard of this film, all I knew were the character designs because of a Black Friday catalog for Walmart, and what I saw didn't really intrigue me at all. And then I finally saw the trailer, and I just knew I had to see Wreck-It Ralph, and I was beyond surprised of just how much fun this film was to watch, and how rewatchable it is in the end. Just to get this out of the way, to say I was disappointed in Ralph Breaks the Internet would be a blatant understatement, but I think the disappointment of the sequel only made me appreciate appreciate this first film even more. I love literally everything about this film, from the characters, to the story, to the world building, to King Candy just stealing every single scene he's in. I could go on for so long of why this movie stood out to me, but I think the biggest compliments you can give this is that this feels like a Pixar film, but it's not! Brave was the Pixar film that came out the same year as this, and that definitely felt more like a Disney movie. Not that that's a bad thing, of course, just... Everything about Wreck-It Ralph makes me smile and feel good, and I don't have much else to say. I just love rewatching it on a regular basis, and if Disney decides to do something again with it in the future, I just hope they can build off of the good parts that we did get out of Ralph Breaks the Internet, and hopefully we'll have a pretty good Disney trilogy on our hands. Jesus! I'm a furry! Another Disney movie I keep forgetting isn't a Pixar film. A film that subverts expectations, has an iconic duo, a truly imaginative story, and that film is, of course, Zootopia. Despite similar series coming out since Zootopia, such as Netflix's Beastars and BNA, those stories work for their setting and the audience they're directed at, which is certainly older than some animated Disney movie. And yet, Zootopia really doesn't hold any punches with their depiction of mass paranoia and racial tension among cultures and species. I'm still rather in shock of just how straightforward this story was and how complex the world and the characters of it were. And if the rumors of a potential sequel really are true, my only request is that Disney isn't afraid to get even more complex or in-depth to do a good story. As long as they don't dumb down the stakes, story, or characters, I think they could genuinely knock it out of the park with a sequel in the future, and I'm looking forward to see what they do. Pizza time.
Okay, so I don't care that this is gonna sound generic and that everyone else on the internet has said what I'm about to, but Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is genuinely one of the greatest animated films of the last decade. The animation is one of the most gorgeous things I've ever seen in a movie, period. All the characters are memorable and greatly designed, the soundtrack is freaking fire, and the story just speaks volumes to anyone trying to find their identity and feel lost in their own reality. I know I've already said this several times in this video, but I honestly don't know what to say about this movie. Everything great I could say about it has 100% already been said. This film just makes me feel all the feels. I saw this movie in theaters, and honestly, it was great. There were less than five people in the theater counting myself and my Nana. No, I am not kidding. I saw this film the day after it came out, and not five people were in the theater and it was four in the afternoon. My first time watching this film, I had several moments where I almost teared up, and they still get me whenever I rewatch it. I could go on forever about why I love these characters, the story, the music, the animation, literally everything about this film I just love, and I can't say enough. This film is amazing, and probably my favorite animated film of 2018. So what could I put here that could possibly top this? Well, let's end this video the way we started it, with an underrated gem. A guy opens his door and gets shot, and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. Fantastic Mr. Fox is one of my favorite animated films of all time, with beautiful stop motion, great voice acting, the classic charm of director Wes Anderson, and a style of filmmaking. But Fantastic Mr. Fox came out in 2009, and so I can't put it here. So instead, let's talk about the next film that this amazing director made. I Love Dogs. Where do I even start here? I doubt most of you have even seen this film, and if you have, then hopefully you know what I mean. I loved this film, and like Spider-Verse, nothing negative comes to mind when I think about this film. The stop motion is absolutely stunning, the voice acting is fantastic, the story is heartfelt and surprisingly hilarious, and the political undertones of this film are played pretty straight, but they also don't take them so seriously that they take over the main plot. And despite the film being PG-13, they really use the political side to show the corruption of power while also having really no problem poking fun at politics and government overall. If you haven't seen Isle of Dogs and are looking for a more mature, fun, and quirky animated film, definitely check it out. And if you've seen Fantastic Mr. Fox and have yet to see this, I can't recommend it enough. It's an amazing movie. I don't even want to go too much into detail into this film's story. It's something you need to see for yourself, and that's all I can really say. This film is underrated, and I've never heard anybody else in my friend group really talk about it, except for maybe one or two people, so definitely go give it a try sometime. All in all, it's been a crazy decade, to say the least, but, I mean, hey, we got some great films to keep us all sane and occupied and forget about our problems. This video was actually super fun to put together, and if you guys like this format of stuff, feel free to send me suggestions for future things. I might eventually do my top 10 animated series as well, and I have a few other ideas spinning around my head, but for now, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.